buyer. Don't look for buyers whose goal is the cheapest price. So when I come up to someone and their goal is always cheapest price, bottom line, I don't want to do business with this guy. There's no room on the bone. They're greedy. Yes, yes, yes. Namaste. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about comes about. Whatever you focus on grows. <clears throat> Last video, I focused on sales. <clears throat> Talking about sales. Sales. Sales can mean different things to different people. Sales is, I mean, what is, what is, we, we've been talking philosophically about sales. I think you need to do this. A product that goes to a consumer or what you would call a customer. I like, I prefer the word client. They're clients of mine. Feels like we have a deeper relationship. Don't see your customers as, they are strangers for sure. Meaning all the money that we want as salesmen is in the pockets, purses, wallets, checkbooks, and credit cards of other people. It's super important that you repeat things like that to understand the concept that it's it's not my mom and dad. It's, 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 that's a one-time sale to be a salesman is to assist in sales or saleswoman is to take a product. The product could be a service, right? Product could be a tangible product. It could be an intellectual project. It could be, you know, uh, it could be anything, right? A cover for a grill or whatever. And you take this product to the customer, what I'd prefer to call client. And the result is money. And that's a sale. Everybody gets what a sale is, but it, but not necessarily. <clears throat> Sales can look different for different industries, different sectors. There may be different ways of going about it. But the basic concept is you have you, you have a product or service, and you need to get it in front of other people. Now, the shortest path is only put it in front of people looking for it. So one of the hardest products, in my opinion, to sell is a product that applies to everyone, like toothpaste. I mean, how do you sell toothpaste? You know, like you don't see guy, hey, hey, what's up, man? Let me, what kind of toothpaste you use? Why? Because it's a commodity product, okay? So this is a, a low cost consumer product. Maybe it costs a dollar, two dollars. These kind of products, as a salesman, we can use these kind of products, but only as a loss leader. Meaning we might sell a one dollar product, a two dollar product, and we might sell it at a loss. Maybe it costs you $4 to make it and you sell it for $1. And you say, why would you do that? We'll talk about that. I used to do this all the time. I would make something that cost me three, $4 to make and then I'd put it up for sale for a dollar, $2. And you go, what do you mean? Now I'm talking old days. I would run ads and I'd say, send $1 for more information or $1 to buy this. Why? Because a person who would send me a dollar to buy my $4 item just became uh, we were talking last week, a prospect, a lead, right? And now I can lean on this lead or follow up with this lead. And if I figure out that for every $100 I give away, remember what you give away, you get to keep, every $100 I give away in cost on a loss, on a loss I generate you know, 3,000 in sales, then I've, I've figured out something there. And, and I'm kind of jumping ahead with that. I shouldn't have, went, I shouldn't have led with that. That was a loss leader. That's down the road. That's down the funnel, man. But basically, sales is a generic term for selling shit. We got a product or a service. We want to get it to a customer. I prefer to call it a client because a client, a client implies that I could sell them more stuff. I don't want to have one transaction with you. Like I've created, I wrote this book. You don't have to die broke. It's free. I hope that's not where it ends. I hope you don't read this and that's it, right? Why? I want you to go down the rabbit hole, right? Why? Because I want to sell you this. This is $27. So I wrote this one time. I spent, you know, it'll be sold over and over and over and over in per per perpetuity into the future. What? Through my what? Sales funnel. So anytime a book is sold, I sell books, I sell services, I, I, I rent things, right? 
I, uh, uh, you get, so these are part of my sales funnel. You need a sales funnel. So we see the big picture. Now we're in a big ocean as salesmen. What is a salesman or a saleswoman? I mean that term generically. It means you're going to assist your customer buying your product. Some products need assistance and they have a salesman and for the assistance you get paid. Okay. And that's called what commissions and commissions are what profits. Wages are fine. Wages will pay bills. Wages are honorable. Having a job where you get paid a certain amount of wages. But when you have a job that'll pay you in commissions or in sales profits, or you have control of the funnel or you get to sell it. Once you get that control, you're, you need to understand your income can go horizontal. Meaning yesterday or the other day on, on, in, on Instagram, I talked about hor vertical income. That's a job, things like that. Like you, you build a porch, they pay you, you paint a house, they pay you, you go to work on Friday, they pay you. That's vertical income. You need that, but you need horizontal income. Sales opens up the world to both. You can have a base pay. You can get a commission. You might get a reoccurring commission, meaning you begin to open up multiple streams of income, symbiotic relationships. So if you sell insurance, that might lead to back ending this. If you sell cars, maybe if you upgrade them into a series radio, you get a $50 bump. If they sign up on subscription, maybe you get an ongoing re reoccurring revenue stream. If they didn't do that, that would be stupid. Like the salesman should get paid every month forever. I bet they don't do that, but if they did, I bet they'd sell a shit ton more series, uh, uh, you know, connecting to your car. If that salesman got paid $2 every month that you made your bill and he went and did that and got thousands and thousands and thousands of people through selling cars onto the series radio network. When he left selling cars, he would still be getting a horizontal drip. So try to position yourself in situations like that versus, you know, uh, the standard sales product. Like I have, we have a car, I sell it, I get a commission, we shake hands, you leave. You as a salesman need to figure out how could I add three, four, five more deals? What could I do? What could I do to serve my customer? What could I do to, I don't know, get the bed liner in or get them some add-ons or maybe add this, not to screw them over, but to give them more value, to give them a better truck, a more valuable truck, a better protected truck. Like, couldn't I serve this person and make more money? That's how you need to, the, the goal of sales isn't to always go to the bottom. What's the cheapest price, right? That's not it. And as a buyer, don't look for buyers whose goal is the cheapest price. So when I come up to someone and their goal is always cheapest price, bottom line, I don't want to do business with this guy. There's no room on the bone. They're greedy. See, people who want everything as cheap as possible. Don't want to spend. Those are greedy people. I don't want to sell to those people. I want to sell to the guy gets the free book goes, Oh man, that was so good. Let me throw OGP $20. He buys a hard copy. I sign it, put a little note in there, link to my website. What's that? What is that? As a little nudge. Hey, go check this out. Then he goes there and goes, man, I like this money flow thing. Let me get the ebook. No, no, make it a hardback. He spends $77, right? People look to confirm decisions. So if someone's buying a boat, guess what else they need? They're going to need a new fishing pole. Nobody's going to put an old fishing pole in a new boat, right? When you get a new motorcycle is the best time to get someone to buy a new leather jacket or a new helmet, man, you can't wear that old helmet on this new bike. You need to serve that person. They just bought this beautiful bike. Now they need a new state of the art, ultimate protection, uh, air conditioned, blah, blah. You got it. Your job as the salesman is to convince them not to spend more money. You don't see it like that. Don't lump yourself in with those people, but to serve this person, your job as a salesperson is to walk someone through your sales funnel, not to take advantage of them, to serve their need. So I'm only looking for people who are looking for me. So the only guy that I'm giving a free ebook to that's entitled, you don't have to die broke is someone who's probably concerned about dying broke. So this book becomes a giant while it does serve them. And it's way worth more than the money that, I mean, this is priceless. This right here, make you a millionaire. Just go do this for 20 years. You have millions of dollars, man. I give you my blueprint. But what happens when you read this and you identify with it?
you want a little more. Then you go to here. You don't think I did this by accident, right? Then what? If you want a little bit more, then what? You go to Discord. And each step of the way, they get a little closer to me. Now, I'm going to be honest. Most of my friends are here. And you say, why? Why, why, would I, why wouldn't my friends buy from me? If you're a real estate agent, why wouldn't your friends do real estate business with you? If you owned a bar, I hope they drink there. And if you own a restaurant, I hope they eat there. So most of my friends in life are over here. I mean, I only have so much time to devote. What am I going to do? Devote all my time to people who don't use my product or service? See, this becomes part of my life. So what I'm selling becomes part of me. When I wake up in the morning, it's time for the Gerald Peters Show. When I go to bed, Gerald Peters Show keeps going, collecting horizontal income. So, and we talked about that last week. Man, I'm taking you too deep, too fast. I can see it. Taking you too deep, too fast, man. I can see it. Where are we at on time? And we're only 10 minutes in. I done dropped like 18 books. Um, so we got to see the big spiritual overview. Your big funnel. What is the ultimate goal? What is the perfect customer? Who's the perfect client? How much would they pay for the truck? What features would they add? What things would they have on? And how do we make that scenario look like? Because that's the buyer that I'm mentally thinking about. So if I sell condos on the beach, I'm looking for a guy with extra money. Oceanfront properties reserved for the mighty. I know all of my clients have to be mighty. If they're weak when I meet them, this is not my customer. If they're financially weak when I meet them, not my customer. If they're trying to figure out how to come up with a down payment, not my customer if I'm selling oceanfront property. My customer's gonna be a business owner, stack some money, probably has great credit, has the cash, easy deal, easy sale. All I gotta do is put him in the right condo that when his wife walks in, she's like, oh my God, we'll take it. That's it. I'm in the oh my God experience. I'm in the blow your mind when you walk through the front door. That's, I walked through on my beach condo, I saw the ocean. We'll take it. She didn't need to sell me anymore. All she needed to do was put me in the car and take me there. All she had to know was her product. All she had to have done is do like I do with Bitcoin and other things, just look at it. And when that bumped into you and I said, listen, I'm, I'm a cash buyer. She just said, what is it you want? I mean, what do you mean? I'm only looking for people who are looking for me. Meaning I have product. What do you want? I need to know exactly what my customer wants. If my customer's evasive, blah, blah, they're not ready to buy. I want people that are ready to give me money. They're ready to buy. If I focus on buyers all the time, buyers, and I can fill a chute full of buyers, I'm going to make unlimited horizontal money. So I don't want to sell anything that's a hard sale. I know I see people selling shit. Like, look, to me, it looks like a hard sell, man. Like sell shit people want to buy. Three things. Make people three things people buy all the time. One, sex. That's just the way it is. All kinds of stuff around that. I don't have any interest in doing that, right? Two, weight loss. Weight loss. All kinds of stuff around that. You could probably put beauty in there. You could put weight loss pills, exercise programs, getting fit, being in finance, you know, uh, you know, weight, losing weight, blah, blah, blah. Right? And what's number three? get rich. I don't care what is going on in the economy. Three things always sell. Sex. Inside of sex, you could say vices, alcohol, drugs, gambling. Human beings will always do that shit. Doesn't matter what you think about it. Drugs. That always sells. Weight loss. People, no matter what is going on with the economy, worry about their appearance. They buy makeup. They buy toothpaste. They go to gyms. They work out. They look for diets. That market never goes away. And number three, get rich quick. People always need more money. There's always a new group of 18 year olds turning new. Who, hey, what's up with real estate? Hey, what's up with stock market? Hey, what's up with day trading? Day trading ain't new. Every fucking day you wake up, someone new enters the day trading world and goes, what's this day trading thing about? Or how do I lose? There's always a new 18 year old fat girl. There's always a new horny 18 year old boy. So sex, weight loss, and get rich quick always sell. That's why it's so competitive. Go try to be a finance guru. There's a lot of them, <laughs> right? Oh, gee, there's a lot of people doing what I do, but they don't do what I do with the money flow, right? And, and because of that, 
in whatever area you're sailing in, you can go see someone who's doing your sales funnel probably better than you. You can go and copy it. You can emulate it. What I used to call internalizing it, clip it, right? So <clears throat> now this is my funnel free. Let me, well, back to my analogy. We're in a big ocean, a big lake. It's called a lake and we're in a little boat and we sell what we sell. But in this inning, the, the, the customers are fish. Do I want to throw a bass lure off the side if I'm trying to catch perch? What if I'm fishing for blue fin, bluefish or crab? Do I throw in a bass lure? No, a crab, I would drop a pot, right? So based on the fish, based on the season, based on the lake, based on what I see, in other words, the big picture, the way that I hunt from my particular target, which if I'm looking for blue crabs, I don't throw in a rod and reel, I lower a bait trap, right? And so I have to understand my customer, what they're looking for. And then I need to make it very, 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 very easy for the little crabs to go in the box so that I can pull it up and collect my money. That's your goal. I want to throw bass lures when bass are biting. If the fish aren't out, if I know for a fact when it rains, nobody's biting, don't go fishing. Utilize that time to work on your accounting, your bookkeeping, your marketing. Only sell to people who want to buy, period. So if this guy's thin and in great shape. I'm not trying to sell him weight loss. If this girl's hot, having plenty, I'm not trying to sell that maybe unless she's the product, right? Or he's the product. Get rich, right? You see what I'm saying? If they don't have any interest in getting rich, you don't have to die broke. If they don't care, I'm not telling them about my book. I got a lot of friends could give a shit about this book. They have no money. They know I'm rich and they don't care. So what would, why would I spend 10 seconds talking to them about buying Hanes brand stock or Starbucks or investing in 3M? I'm not going to spend any time on that. Why? They didn't ask for the free ebook. I'm not going to walk around telling my mom, you need to do this. You need to do that. She's not looking for me. If she's looking for me, she'd turn around and say, Hey, gee, how do I invest this money? Now they open the door. Now they're looking for me. Now what? I could take them down to funnel. You say you take your friends down a funnel. Hell yeah. Go get the free ebook. Read it. If they won't do that, they're not going to buy this. I'm not going to get them into discord if they can't make it through a free ebook. Right? So I put up barriers. I put up links, man. Now inside that sales funnel. So I'm one boat in a big social media. Uh, uh, so again, I can only use myself and what I'm doing. So if you're selling lawn care, who needs lawn care? Well, people that own houses. Well, we can eliminate a lot of the town. We can get rid of the apartments and all that. If we wanted to do mailers, if we wanted to email, if we wanted to advertise on Facebook, if we wanted to what, right? And what might we have if we were serious about it? Well, we need something that tells people about our product, right? What could tell people about your product? Uh, maybe you left a little business card that says, I cut lawns. And when I click on it, it goes to your LinkedIn. There's some videos you're talking about how important it is to take care of your lawns. We have an, what, what else? Now you, you get what I'm saying? Meaning I need to know why am I hiring you? So you need to tell the customer why your product or service is good for them. What value? I could just hire the 14 year old kid down the street, bro. Just cause you showed up, knocked on my door. What now? And you go, no, 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 man. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your yard looking banging. Everyone drives by and goes, man, what's up with his yard? It's green. And you're like, how are you going to do that? Easy. Now what? Door just opened for me to back in what? Our fertilizing service comes three, four times a year. Meaning we can stack deals and create horizontal income from a one-time deal where we're trying to find someone to mow their yard. I'm not just mowing their yard. I'm going to put in their gutters. I'm going to do some, I'm going to winterize the yard in the winter, right? I might make a relationship with this guy and that guy. Meaning you can take it as serious as you want. You can build out your funnel as big as you want. You can put as many poles, so to speak, in the water, in your boat as you're selling. It can't just be, I mow yards. Like we can't leave it there. If the thing about sales, it opens the world. You can make as much money as you want. If you find things to sell, especially if you find things to sell that pay you a drip from here on out, sell it once, Drip, 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 drip. That's what makes people go into insurance. It's what makes people go sometimes into real estate. 
It's definitely what makes you become a landlord. Drip, 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 drip. That same effect you get from investing can be acquired in when you start learning how to do selling, especially for your business. So what else could I sell in here? I got a free, I got a $20 book, ebook, what else? Oh, I can add a course, right? So I can start to add things. Well, as I'm going through this funnel, fishing, giving away a free ebook, fishing, giving a, watch. Let's take this down. Man, I feel like I dropped way too much there. Way too much. And it's like, I think we're remiss if we don't talk about digital. So a lot of you guys, I meet, you're trying to be fitness people. You ain't even got a free ebook, man. So one, we said sex always sells. Two, weight loss. And number three, get rich quick. So you post on a social platform, okay? That creates content. The purpose of content is not to sell people. And I see people trying to sell from content. That's not the purpose of it. Now, not saying you can't from time to time go to your cut, your con but content is to create leads. You want to get them off of the platform and in control of you and your business. So if you notice a lot, when I do a video, we'll call this a video. When I do a video, what do I do? A lot of times I do what's what I try to call them to something else. I want to sort and select people. I don't want just a bunch of followers on Instagram. What the fuck good is that? If they don't do something, take action, move over here, buy this, do that. What is the point of it? Now, if the point is just to talk, then I guess mission accomplished. You're talking. Some people are watching, but how I, but in order to serve people, I need something more. So take a guy like Alex Hermosa, this rich dude makes like a hundred million a year. He's on YouTube. And he always opens it up with, my name's Alex Mosa. I don't have anything to sell you, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit, Alex. You have stuff to sell people. You're taking their attention. Time times amount times yield. It's one of the most valuable things you can take. Plus, guess what? Books, courses. He's selling a following. He's selling growing an audience. That back ends people into all his other funnels, okay? That's how everyone does, man. Some people do it up in your face. Some people do it, but there's always a link. There's always a take you here to move you there. That's about sorting and selecting. People are only looking. Master salesmen are not trying to sell to everyone. They're trying to sell to the person that needs what they sell. Okay. Call to action. So I want to point people to what? My free ebook. If they don't click that, they're not looking for me. I'm not putting any time on that. So 10,000 people watch my video. Okay. I'm not paid for that. 10,200. So what if 200 people watch this video? Let me show you how crazy the world is. And two people watch my video, 200 of me, which is no big deal, right? I get that in the first couple hours. That's the people that already bought books. But let's say 200 people watch and my free ebook is free and out of that nine people request this book now what if 20,000 people watch and one person requests the book well, what good was all those people meaning you put this in front of the wrong audience so if you go to the entire world and say would you like to lose weight because the three things right number two is weight loss you say would you like to lose weight Everyone in the world is going to say, yeah, that's not your customer. Your customer is the one that'll take action on the fact they're trying to lose weight. Your customer is the one that'll fucking swallow a blue pill. Not just they want to look better. Fuck, everybody wants to look better. Everybody wants more money. That don't mean everybody's going to request a free ebook about more money. I need that group. So once we get down to the nine, now what? I got them on an email list. I want to talk to them privately. That's horizontal, by the way. You're like, what do you mean? Meaning I'm not an email. I wrote the email a long time ago. Email goes out automatically, right? So it's auto. So my job is to create content. 
that makes people click a button to request a free ebook so that this pre-written auto thing will send it to them, which will then what? Ask them to send me $20. Now this costs money. Costs money, costs time. Time times amount times yield. I got to figure out how many video views do I need to do to get a click and out of nine, how many send me $20 and out of that, how many do $47 and out of that, how many go to discord, right? So once I figure this out, this funnel, now what, what's my job? I'm only looking for people looking for me. So I got to put out something that's valuable enough that a person goes, Hmm, I think I'll execute. I think I'll move. What am I doing? Sorting and selecting. I'm looking for people looking for me. I'm not DMing you. So when you see people getting scammed, they're talking about DMs, man, why would I, I'm not going to DM a complete stranger. Why would I waste time doing that? If I can just make creative videos that opt people into something that an automated email. So when I'm doing bubbles with bath with the kids, this is sending them the book. They're reading the book on their own. I wrote the book five years ago. So five years ago, a product is still bringing in $20 bills. What is that? Horizontal income. Meaning something I did five years ago is still bringing in $20 bills and probably will in perpetuity. Now, what else could we do? We could take this ebook that we asked 20 bucks for. We could upload it to Amazon. Why? Some people won't buy from you. They're going to poke around the edges. They're going to look around. They're going to call other places. They're going to look around you, right? They don't want to come at you. That's all right. Because I know that, because I know there's the guy that'll study the car and know more than the salesman. You know, that guy, right? Knows everything. They're going to creep around. Some people are just quiet. They come over here and buy a book. You make a little money too. A little drip over here. Hopefully that gets them back on the chain on the money flow, right? Back on the chain. So now what? Well, I might want to create content just for these people that assist them. My job as the salesman is to assist them. So my, my responsibility is my responsibility to the money flow is to tell as many people as I possibly can. So I can figure out how many of those people will request this free ebook. Cause that's the people I'm really talking to because then they're going to buy a hard copy. And those are the people who probably take action. Next thing you know, they get their credit fixed. They buy a couple rental properties. They start building wealth. When they see that work, they're going to thank me and they're going to buy the next thing and the next thing and their life is going to prosper. And guess what? Their prosperity prospers me. My prosperity prospers them. You see how all this, like these things you hear me saying, this is this all on purpose. Now, we're going too deep, man. We're going too deep, man. So all you guys that do weight loss and fitness and I'm this and I'm that, and you're just taking pictures of yourself on Instagram, you better learn how to sell, man. You need a damn reason for me to listen to you. So here's what, imagine if I clicked on your thing and it said power workout for 50 year olds and above, give me 30 days. I'll have you doing a hundred pushups. I don't care who you are. That's the video, the real, listen, you 50 years old and over. Can you do a hundred pushups? Probably not. I bet I can get you there in 30 days or less. Now I'm, I'm saying a crazy offer. I don't know if that's even possible, but say what you say. We're going to do it. I'm going to show you three exercises. You give me 30 days and do the three exercises. I show you every day it takes less than 15 minutes. Hit my bio link, grab the free ebook. Let's do this, man. I want to help you. Boom. How many people drop into that? I would, nobody ever says it. So they don't do it. But what if they did? So they would drop into my email. You know what you should send people on that list? They're all guys over 50 or women over 50. Send them shit relevant to that, right? And if a bunch of people hit that, what does that tell you? You have an audience, man. You have something you need to serve. I need to know that information. I need to know from the 25 year old who's done nothing for 10 years, but study workout science that maybe at 52, I fucking know some things that aren't right. And so you go into the marketplace and you serve them but you have to push your intent. You have to create the funnel. Just taking pictures of yourself ain't going to do it. I need to know that you're working, that you care enough about your product and you and your message that when I go to your page, it's not trips, vacations, and fucking off. It's book writing courses and shit you're putting together. Same with the salesman, the pool guy, the lawn guy. I want the guy that cares about my lawn. 
That's the guy I want. I want the AC guy that I don't call other AC guys. You're my guy. And in order, if you're new, you got to get in there. It means you got to push your way in. And, and then guess what? You create this funnel, man. You're looking for certain customers. You're looking for certain customers. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes in the business cycle, it's easy. And a monkey can make money. Anybody running a lawn care business make money. Anybody running a plumbing business, an AC, but the economy's flush and business is easy. You wait till the business cycle turns and people don't repair plumbing. People don't fix broken shit. People don't go to Home Depot. People cancel Netflix. People stop riding an Uber. Then guess what? It's going to come down to the guy who actually understands sales, marketing, branding, pitching, creating content. That guy still going to make money. And that's why I tell people all the time, I'm not in a recession. Other people might be. My shit's global, right? My rents are coming in. My dividend stocks are going to pay me, which means I can sit right here and do this. Whether anybody buys a book or not, I can just keep doing it day after day after day. That's a conversation about getting your buckets right. But if you want to be a good salesman, if you start from a financially strong position, meaning you have money, you have assets and you have skills and you have a funnel, a funnel built out, you can stay in business, man. When the AC guy knows how to brand his business, market his business, create like the one that they'll come a point where the only survivors are the people that know that. Okay. Same in the chiropractic world, same in that world, same in the pool world. When economic crash comes, all that easy money gets sucked right out. And all those guys that got paid just because they showed up and they had rude customer service. They don't know how to sort and select their customers. They don't have reserve funds. They're not investing in assets that protect their business. They all get fucking wiped out. Okay. They all get wiped out. So you have to that. Well, I can't wait for that day either. I'm sick. Of all the easy money, man. Everybody making money easy with horrible. I'm looking forward to that. Let's blow all those guys out. Man. I hate nothing worse than bad customer service. It's like, God, how did God even let you stay in business? Like he should punish you. A lot of I'm dealing with a contractor right now. I've been using him 10 years. I hope God needs to punish him. Man. The way he runs his business is, is a, it's an assault and an offense against God, the universe, and his customers and people. And it won't be long. He will be out of business. Because the first fucking solicitation, the first person that puts themselves in front of me and that actually cares and pushes their intent and mentions to me their customer service and their follow-up care program, the first person that does that, that dude's gone. I'm going to change his business. First person. That's how easy. Meaning, if there's a new young buck in that business, all he's got to learn is sales. The moment he learns sales and can pitch me and puts together his table. I mean, we talked about this yesterday. That's what I meant to talk about today. I don't even know what I've been babbling about. And he... I don't know what we call it. We got newspaper. Maybe we call it IG. Maybe we call it local bulletin board. Maybe we call it Facebook. You got to find a place where people congregate that you can get in front of them, right? Could be a door hanger, right? Could be a door hanger. Could be a podcast in my world. Could be a newsletter, right? Newsletter. These things aren't about making money, man. These things are about what? Each one of these things, and I try to work for. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, two podcasts, newsletter. All of those push people to a free offer, a free quote, right? Free quote, a book, a report, and this needs to be valuable. So I work the table. I got a radio show. I got a podcast. I've got a YouTube channel. I got door flyers. I've got postcard mailings. Whatever the four are, try to find four for me. Maybe you run podcast ads. I'm thinking about running some podcast ads. Sending people to what? You don't have to die broke. So what? I can get them into my funnel. I need to find people that are not on Instagram, man. I, yeah, Instagram is a tool, and I need to bang Instagram every day, right? I need to bang YouTube every day. I need to hit Twitter every day, right? I need to do that. I need to be on the podcast every day. Why? Because that pushes people to this funnel, this free report. 
And so as I look at this, this is the engine that feeds everything. Same for your business, right? The table, the stool of prospecting, the, top, the prospecting table, whatever you want to call it, I always call it a table. I used to say, hey, do a stool, do a table. And when I say that, if I said do a table, they knew I meant get, let's get four ads going. Let's get an ad in the paper, get an ad in the magazine, let's get an ad online, and let's do a postcard drip or a letter drip, right? Boom. And it was different for a stool than a table. And we would start that process. All of that's got to bring in prospects. And then we need a simple way. All of those are not your buyers. So we need a simple way to, again, sort, to select, right? To sort and select these prospects because we're only looking for people who are looking for us. So if you don't have any interest in trading stocks, I don't need to talk to you about the money flow. So I'm not going to go out and put a stock trading video in front of the whole fucking world. No, man. I'm going to put out a video that mentions I'm a successful stock trader or I mentions that blah, 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 which leads them to here, to here, to then there. Then I'm only talking to people, right? So then when I'm pitching stocks or pitching a book or pitching everyone there is a potential client. They've come through this. So I'm not trying to pitch, send me $77 right here. Nobody on the door hanger is going to go, oh, look, I can order a book, fill it out. No. You got to give them a reason. You got to interrupt their life, man. You got to show them some of value that'll make them stop. You go, huh? Free steak dinner, huh? Now that don't work on me. I don't want your shitty steak because I only I only eat like two hundred dollars steak dinner. So that ain't gonna work on me. I'm not your customer. That might work on a sixty-five year old who's on a budget. He might want to go sit for a fucking steak dinner to listen to you babble. Not me. So you got to know. And, and so in that situation, who are you targeting? Right? So what your job is, create content, work on narrowing these down so that you get down to the, pri to the right prospects. You don't sell cars to people that have brand new cars. You don't sell lawn care to people that live in condos. And these are obvious examples, but you don't sell pool service to people who don't have pools. So we got to find a way of narrowing it down. Who has a swimming pool? That's who I send my postcard to. Who has a swimming pool? That's who I want to run my Facebook ad in front of people who've searched about swimming pools in this area. Okay, I want to be on a podcast that talks about swimming pools if I have a product that applies to all people that have swimming pools, right? So we got to ask ourselves, is it a local service or is it a product that goes nationwide? Product goes nationwide, I want to create content on YouTube, on Instagram, and then I want to get it on Facebook, right? So why? The, I'm doing the table. And all of those are going to point people to my thing. Try to... Most, for toothpaste, you don't need steps. Everyone uses toothpaste. Because everyone on earth uses it, it's commoditized. You need to understand this. It's commoditized. Oil is commoditized because we all use it. Meaning you can sell someone a painting and get more than you can even for an expensive barrel of oil. You'll never be able to sell a barrel of oil for a million dollars. But you can sell a Lamborghini for a million dollars. It's not a commodity. There's limited supply. Commodity means there's a bunch of it. There's a lot of fucking toothpaste. So there's no money on the bone for us, right? So we have to sell a higher thing. But if we were a dental office, if we were a dental office, and I said, listen, if you, and I'm making this up, if you, do, if you are on schedule with us, you, you have free toothpaste for life. I don't know who would respond to that, but you're like, hey, all my customers never pay for toothpaste. I give you, I've created the world's best toothpaste. And it's free if you come to my dental clinic. But matter of fact, I'll send you a free tooth. Now, that's one way you may take something as commoditized as toothpaste because you make it different. You put a different wrapper on it. You make it unique. So if, you, if you're a fitness guy, gal, you need to have something. You found something unique. I found the money flow. I found a a reoccurring pattern that other people weren't talking about inside a price movement inside of something that everyone saw every day stock market's a fucking commodity it's just there everyone has access to it but i found a unique little thing that other people weren't talking about right and so i repackaged that and i said listen i'll sell it to you i'll share with you what i learned save you seven years narrow in your time that's what i offer is to save people buying 400 books 
is to save you blowing out eight times. I'm let, let me fast forward you on this process. That's a, that's a big value for $77. And then people will lightning, oh, he knows other shit. Yeah, boom, now we work our way to this course. So as I meet the dental guy and he gives me the free toothpaste, does the checkout and they explain to me, man, I'm like, man, if I just hang out here, I just have perfect dental care. Well, who's your customer there? Someone who wants perfect dental care with good service, they're gonna come all the time, right? So it's probably not a poor family. So we don't mail postcard follow-ups into the ghetto unless we have some deal going with the government where we're gonna get, you know, a refiner, you know, some sort of fee, then maybe we would target them. But you get what I'm saying? This all starts with here, and it leads to some kind of free offer, some sort of free communication for most businesses, not every business. But if I ran, if I ran any, like a plumbing, electrical, every transaction, I want that customer forever. Meaning I don't ever want them to call another plumber. And unfortunately, when, when times are good and everybody's fat, people don't see it like that. But when I have a friend that runs a pest control business, they want your business for life. They want everyone in their town to give them $60 a month, right? That's their goal. They have to come up with a reason for that. And it starts with, let me look at your house. Let me give you a complimentary inspection. Maybe tell you what you're doing wrong, what you could do, what you could move, what you could change, what we could treat it with to keep you and your family bunk free, which is, can we, let's be honest, healthier, right? So when I visit the website and there's a video that pitches that and offers the free quote so that when I run the local newspaper ad or the local ad on Instagram or on Facebook, it points to the site with me pitching that idea, pointing to getting you on my email list. Now, the reason for that is when they, when they schedule it, I wanna follow up with them because people get busy or they change their mind or think about it later and then they, they have two or three emails later, they buy it. The 50th email from me with a free, I do an email where I send out free trade alerts, you know, one, one good trade that I see every year, it's valuable, I'm actually taking it, it's, it's me doing it. I believe it's a value shows them the chart. I'm giving them part of my class. It's free. Every time I email that, I get money. But that started four years ago, creating content and then connecting the dots and creating a table, connecting it to a free offer that back in an offer and an offer and an offer. That is sales, okay? And again, I big pictured it. And, and in future sales video, man, I feel like I gotta get past the big picture of sales so that I can get all the bad sailing out of you. When times are, times are bountiful and abundant, people are horrible salesmen. They don't understand. This is an art. This is real salesmen, wake up selling, go to bed selling. Everything about GP is a sell. Now, I don't mean that in a money content, meaning I'm not hanging out with you if I'm not getting something out of it. And again, not in a bad way, because if I get something out of you, I'm giving you something. And that may be friendship. So the moment I feel like I'm giving you friendship and you're not giving me friendship, I'm out. It needs to be an exchange. Now, I want to give more than people give me. I want everyone who leaves my relationship with me, who leaves hanging out with me, who's around me to leave feeling more abundant, that it's possible to get rich, to feel more excited about their business, about expanding it, about the stock market. Everything I do, I want it to be contagious. Everyone around me, I tell them, I got millions of dollars in properties. Let me show you how I did it. I got a million dollars in the stock market. Let me show you how I did it. And it all starts with this free ebook. And it's all true. Man, I knocked this down. Didn't even feel it. I apologize there. And it's all true. So now I get to operate inside of integrity with excitement from the moment I wake up to the moment I got. I took that same concept to when I was in network marketing, recruiting people. I believed in what I was doing wholeheartedly. When I, if I sold cars, that is the only car. Whatever brand it is, is the best brand in the world. Or I'm not selling it. I've got to believe that. Even if it's not true, I gotta believe it. You have to convert you. And then you have to see yourself as that, okay? It is, every, it is all encompassing. All master salesmen are what they sell. They are, it is, it becomes them. It oozes out of them. If you're a nurse, you're always a nurse. If you're a doctor, it, you're never not a doctor. You get what I'm saying? Blue collar people don't tend to see it that way. So we wanna start thinking like the rich, the successful, the masters, the 7% that run this world. Listen to me, 
Anybody in America can get rich, irregardless of age, race, or financial situation. I believe in you. I'm a supporter. Hey, hit me up. Let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. Let's talk about your situation. Hit my bio link. Let's talk. See? Now, that's true. I do that. But at the end of the video, I try to pitch you on something. Some videos, I don't do it, but some, it's right on purpose. At the very end, what is it? Call to action. Meaning, I know someone watched this and was like, wow, good. Let me serve that person. Maybe not you. Maybe it's one person out of the 20,000 and they do a thing and they do a one-on-one -on -one with me. I make a few bucks. I help them. Then they do this, they do that, and that relationship turns into a friendship. That is one thing sales does. It will make your life more abundant and it'll help you serve other people. God bless. Thank you.